Right, so I shall have like fluid. Yes, we are back with Remember the Flowers, and it was far more than the flowers Cyrus was remembering in that last episode. So, let's see how he deals with that. Vita snaps me back to the present. Do you need a minute? It feels weird to talk, like I've been asleep for so long I don't know how to. Although, I guess that's not entirely inaccurate. Yeah, I'll be fine. Could I ask for a towel to wipe myself off with, though? Vita nods before going to retrieve one. I stared at my hands for a moment. Am I really out of there? Out of that tank, out of that hell. Vita comes to place a slightly damp towel on my open hands. Oh, you look exhausted. Should I take that as a sign you've remembered something? More than you know. I wipe the cool towel across my forehead, enjoying the sensation. I think it's all back, more or less. I get Vita's eyes to widen. Are you serious? I nod as I calmly retrieve my tea. Yeah, I am. It's a bit jumbled, but I bet if you ask me something I'll be able to answer it. Let's take it slow for a moment. As eager as I am to learn more, my duties as a doctor come first. You're psychologically spent. Is that a problem? Yes. What kind of a question is that? I swirl the tea in my cup. I don't feel anything right now. I don't think it'll be that bad. That's the problem, Cyrus. We'll take a twenty-minute breather. I've been around this long. I can last twenty more minutes, I guess. A morbid sense of humour you've got there. You learn to make yourself laugh. Vita is on the other side of the room, writing stuff down. I've taken the liberty of filling up my cup of tea while I wait. I can see my tired expression reflected in the murky liquid. More memories start trickling back into my head. Maybe that's not the right way to phrase it. It's like they are always there, but something was blocking them. It's almost like sifting through your attic after a long time. Everything's always been there, even if you've forgotten it. Vita eventually comes back to sit across from me. How are you feeling, Cyrus? Honestly, I'm not too sure. I'm still trying to process everything. That doesn't surprise me. I lean back to look at the ceiling. This doesn't feel real, but at the same time it feels natural. Do you remember your experiences over the last week? More or less. Honestly, that's what feels like the dream. Vita flips through their notes. You've been using a dormant personality state for an extended period of time. That was you, but... Also, wasn't you? You'll probably be disoriented for a while. I recommend you write stuff down so you remember them. Speaking of, I take it you're an old soul too? I mean in. You're in Rasoom for a while, weren't you? Uh, yes, I was. About fifty years. Why? I'm just curious. You're using a pencil and paper even though you have an axiom. Peter chuckles. <laughs> That's what clued you in? Not the mechanical throat replacement? Or prominent scars? I shrug. The hyena had a mechanical arm, but I didn't think she was from Rasoom. 
I see. Oh, you've got a keen eye. Hey, come on. I'm sure it'll respect your elders. Oh, we'll see about that. Reader continues to scribble in their notebook. Well, I'm glad to see you're still in one piece after all that. You're quite remarkable, I have to admit. That right? I don't feel anything special. Don't really feel anything at all. I've been working here for a while now and dealt with oh, at least a dozen similar cases. It's a 50-50 whether or not people can live normally afterward. I'm surprised the odds are that good. I assume the other half just go insane? Yes, uh, pretty much. Sounds about right. Rita narrows their eyes at me. Are you sure you're feeling all right? You're taking all this a little too well. I mean, eh? Like I said, I don't feel anything in particular. Nothing at all. Ah, oh, if you say so. I'm just curious. It already seems like your two personalities are melded together. A shrug. I think it's more like I booted up an old save state than reloaded the current one. I have no idea what you're talking about. Stuff having to do with long gone technology. Well, at least you have something to talk to Aaron about. I've been told he has a fascination with old tech. Aaron, huh? The tiger who broke me out. Is there a problem? Not sure. I'm just thinking. I swirled the tea for a moment before taking another sip of it. Aaron did keep me in the dark for a while, huh? Do you mind letting him in? I want to talk to him. Oh, if that's what you want. I nod. Vida gets up from the chair and heads towards the door. I hear an electronic beep before the door slides open, causing a certain tiger to nearly fall flat on his face. Hey, warm me next time. What happened to your cat-like reflexes? You caught me off guard. Aaron huffs at Vitra and starts getting another verbal altercation with the doctor. I look him over. This is the man, huh? He catches me staring at him and immediately freezes. He looks frightened. I motion him to come over. He looks hesitant, but he slowly makes his way over to me after a moment. Um, <laughs> hey Cyrus. Is it going well? It's going. Come on, sit with me for a sec. I pat the free space on the patient bed. Aaron continues moving slowly before finally sitting down next to me. I take another sip of tea before placing it down. Sitting in silence. Out of the corner of my eye, I see Aaron shake ever so slightly. His fur is slightly raised too. I can hear his tail swishing behind us on the bed. We sit like this for a little while longer. Aaron jumps when I break the silence. So, Aaron. Uh, yes, uh, I mean... I mean he coughs into his hand. Uh, yeah? Uh, what is it, Cyrus? You've known about this all along, haven't you? Aaron doesn't reply. He looks too scared to. You knew there was no way for me to get back home. Well, not without a time machine or something stupid like that. I remember the other day when you were asking me about Damien. What he's like, or rather, what he was like. I shake my head. Man, how dumb was I? I look over at the tiger. You were scared to tell me, weren't you? Uh, I... I'm not surprised. It's quite a bombshell to drop on someone. Still. You wanted to keep me in the dark for as long as you could. That's... All of you were keeping this from me. Oh, we... 
Do you know what, Aaron? Aaron's chattering teeth are all the response I get. So I take it upon myself to keep the conversation going. I reach my hand out to him, which makes him reflexively pull back and shut his eyes. I gently pick up his tense paw, stroking the back of it. Yep, still soft. He starts to calm down a little and peeks an eye open. Aaron, thank you. Huh? You wanted to protect me from myself for as long as you could. Even if it meant lying to me. Aaron writes his quivering lip. I hold his paw with both hands. I'm hoping I can comfort him, if just a little bit. I think I'm still remembering how to do that. You... you can't go home. I know. If we just got you out of here, you wouldn't have needed to remember. I know. Everything you've ever known. Gone. I know. I put him closer that I can get a better look at his face. Thank you, Aaron. You let me live in a fantasy long enough to enjoy myself. Even with most of my memories back, I can't think of the last time I felt so free. I was happy with you these past few days. I hope you know that. Aaron starts to shake as tears spill over. Aaron surprises me as he lifts his other paw to hold my cheek. It's hard to believe you when you have that sad look on your face. Aaron's paw trembles against my skin. I try to give him a soft smile. Well, part of me did just die. It's hard not to feel a little sad, I guess. Cyrus. I pull him down close, hugging his face into my chest and trying to stroke his back to ease his pain. I can feel his tears soak through my sweater. We don't say anything for a while. I just keep him close. I try to stifle a laugh. <laughs> Shouldn't it be the other way around? Shouldn't he be comforting me? Eventually, I ask Vita for another pot of tea. I think we could all use something to help us relax. When Aaron does eventually pull away, he's still wiping tears off of his cheeks. Sorry, I shouldn't have got so carried away. Vita places a tray full of cups on their desk while handing each of us one. This is precisely why I didn't want you in here. Aaron sheepishly takes a sip from his cup. Is he usually like this? Vita sits down in their chair before picking up their book. Uh, not this bad. He's been emotional before, but not like this. Oh. I try to stroke Aaron's back. See? Everything's going to be fine. Aaron looks at me with doubt. I guess I'm not doing a good job at fooling him. I sip my tea quietly. It doesn't seem as flavourful as it did before. I'll ask one more time. Are you sure you're all right? I scratch my head. It's okay as I can be, I guess. I don't know what kind of answer you want, but all in all, I think I'm stable. Uh, if you say so. Peter takes that as their cue to get back to work. They take their pencil back out and open their book ready to write. Well, let's start slow, and from the beginning. What's your name and how old are you? I take another sip of tea for placing it back on the desk. My name is Cyrus Galahad Cantwell. I'm not sure what's a good estimate, but I'd say I'm about 27 or 28. After graduating with a doctorate, I was taken into what you all call resume to do some work. Vita writes everything almost as fast as I can speak. What do you mean by what we call resume? A long time ago, the company I worked for was called Current. 
They were one of the leading medical facilities in the country. They changed their name a while after the world ended. I think that was about 70 years ago. Why did you work for them? At first I just volunteered for experiments in the medical field. My friend's dad made a breakthrough in organ transplantation. Rita writes furiously. Which was? My mouth is getting dry from talking so much. I grab the tea again to wet my lips. This is going to be a mouthful. If you were blessed at a certain biological makeup, they could treat your organs, they can be universally donated. They would take a good and healthy organ from you, and then put in an artificial one. After being in your body long enough, and some external treatment, it would adapt and eventually replace the organ that was donated. I lift up my shirt to point to my kidney. If my math's right, I donated my left kidney five times and my right six. I remember they screwed something up during the left one once. Blood was going everywhere. Pretty sure that guy got fired. By chance, I glanced towards Aaron. He looks horrified. I feel a little embarrassed showing my body off. Now, you might be asking, why would you remember an accident like that? I'm pretty sure you know the answer to that, don't you, Doctor? Rita finishes writing and stares at me. They give me a look of discomfort. Based on our findings, eventually Carrie develops an immunity to most anaesthetics. Right you are. They tried inducing comas, but they weren't easy to pull people out of. I think I was out for a month when they tried it on me. You were awake through all of it? More or less. It didn't really hurt, and it was gross for the first several surgeries. I got over it eventually. Kinda had to, you know. Uh, on average, it takes about a hundred years to develop such an immunity. There aren't many that are as old as you are. Want to know why? Peter's eyes widen as they never really questioned it. I'll take that as a yes. I move to take off my shirt and jacket, tossing them behind me. Aaron has apprehensive written all over his face. I guess this is kind of a bizarre way to look. Regardless, I raise my hand up to my chest where my scarred heart is. A long time ago, right after the fall, I was outfitted with an artificial enhancement to my heart. Dr. Chow was the one who designed and made it for me. Peter looks puzzled, indicating for me to explain myself. I guess it has been a long time. Dr. Chow is the one who recruited me. He was my friend's father. We knew each other for a long time before the fall. He was there when Rasoom was founded, a prominent member of the board and the genius. I've never heard of this man. He isn't in any of the records we've procured. I'm getting through that, don't worry. As I was saying, he's the one who designed my heart along with the ports on our backs. As far as I know, I was the only one to be outfitted with one at the time. It made me much more compatible in terms of organ donation. Peter goes back to writing their notes, underlining whole sections now and then. It's a big reason why I've still up an atom at this point, along with the serum they give us. Although that alone won't stop the aging process entirely, obviously. I pinch my long white hair between my fingers. Peter takes a moment to collect their thoughts. Indeed, even with the fluids they give us, a carrier doesn't have that much longer of a lifespan than regular people. In fact, depending on how many times they're operated on, their lives are cut significantly shorter. That's right, hence why I have so many more scars. They operate on me a hell of a lot more times than the average resident. But why? Why weren't there more like me? Simply put, Dr. Chow committed suicide. Aaron and Vita both look shocked. Admittedly saying that out loud does elicit a tinge of sadness. I take another sip of tea. It's gone cold. He didn't want Darius to make any more people like me. So he destroyed his research notes and then killed himself. 
At least that's what I was told. I'm not too sure about the details. I look over to the wall. He was a good man. I'm surprised to hear that. Why's that? Isn't he the reason you're still here? I look back towards Vito with a neutral expression. I mean, not really. It was my choice at the end of the day. I shrug. I can only blame myself. You're on. Aaron breaks his silence. Don't you dare blame yourself for what they did to you. I blink at him, not really sure what to say. Uh, but... Well, I hear they took advantage of someone's goodwill, sent them to hell and then laughed as they profited off of them. I guess that's not entirely inaccurate. Aaron, seriously, I made peace with my situation a long time ago. Aaron stands, fists balled up. And that's the problem. You have every right to be angry than anyone else. It makes you feel any better. I haven't felt anger in a few centuries. He slams his fist into a wall, shaking everything in the room. I guess my attempt to come to him didn't work. He has had a deep exhale. I have some work to do. I'll see you around. Aaron doesn't look back at me when he exits the room. I can see how flared up his neck fur is as he leaves. I can't help but scratch my cheek. Really out of pride if I thought that was an okay response. Oh, don't blame yourself. Your feelings towards your situation are valid. Aaron is just... Uh, worried about Xavier? Vita nods solemnly. I lean back. I guess I should keep what I know about Xavier's secret for the time being. Vita grabs my attention as they close their notebook. I think we've all had a little too much excitement for one morning. Whether or not you say you're fine, I think it'd be best if we take a break. Whatever you say. You are a doctor, after all. Uh, so are you, Dr. Cyrus. Oh, yeah. I guess I am, huh? I'm not sure I qualify as one anymore. Doubt they'll accept my excuse to get recertified. Oh, don't worry. I'm not technically one either. In fact, I'm called the local vet more often than not. Well, if you need a test on me to try something out, you know who to come to. That's almost too morbid, even for me. Vita lets out a mechanical chuckle. <laughs> almost. We can go over some more tests another time. We'll need to do a physical soon. Pretty sure that's something you're supposed to do at the beginning. What can I say? I'm not really a doctor after all. Hmm. Fair point. This is as good a time as any to show you your room. Uh, please, uh, follow me. I pick up my clothes and hold them under my arm. Are you more comfortable being an exhibitionist? Oh. Not really. I was naked a lot of the time, so I guess I'm just used to it. I see. Follow me, Cyrus Cantwell. You can just call me Cyrus. Vita takes me down the hall and through a break room of sorts. This is the communal kitchen. I'm mainly the only one to use it, but we'll be sharing it from now on. There's another on the side of the building as well. It's been a while since I've cooked. I wonder what's changed. We can order pre-cooked food for you. That's what most people around here do. I take it more than just Aaron's group works here. There are a few factions, yes. Peter takes me down another unfamiliar hall. I don't know how they keep track of where everything is. All right, this is going to be your room for the time being. Vita takes out a card from their pocket and hands it to me, along with a piece of paper. You can use these to unlock your room. They're your keycard and passcode. Huh, thanks. Wait, 
Your room didn't have a key card. Why not? That was an old medical wing I outfitted. It's not that complicated. Barely not. I've been told you'll get an axiom soon. I also wrote my ID down. When you're at it, we'll be able to communicate without being face to face. All right, that shouldn't be too difficult. I slide the card and input the passcode. There's an audible ding as the door slides open. My new room was pretty barren, just a bed and a dress along with the lamp. This was a storage room, so they had to move everything out before fitting you in. Again, we can order whatever you want. I kind of just want to take a nap. Yeah, by all means. Peter pauses. Don't hesitate if you need anything. Have a good day, Cyrus Cantwell. Sure. See you later, Vita. As they start walking away, I close the door and take in a fresh breath of air. <sighs> it's stagnant. Instead of making good on my nap, I rest my back against the door and slowly slide down until I'm sitting. Man, what a weird day. I look up at the ceiling. More and more starts to set in. Maybe I should have asked Vita for more advice. Despite having come to terms with everything years ago, I feel a pit in my stomach. It's something I can't identify right away. Sadness? Remorse? Anxiety? I guess only a little while ago I still really had a place to go back to. I really am stupid. I pull my knees up to my chest, opting to instead stare at the floor. I said I felt nothing. I guess that was a lie too. I wish I could go back to feeling nothing. Right now I just feel like shit. And nothing is better than shit by a country mile. It's hard to keep track of my thoughts as I try to filter through everything. A few centuries worth of memories are bouncing around. Although I was unconscious most of the time, it's still a surreal feeling. I feel extremely tired. For the first time in a while, my mind is spent, despite my body being somewhat awake. I eventually get up and turn off the lights while taking my shoes and socks off and laying them by the door. With a bit of exhaustion, I make my way back to my new bed. Might as well test it out. I try to get comfortable, but don't crawl into the blankets just yet. It's all right, I guess. This isn't compared to Aaron's bed. Or Damien's. I don't know what time it is when I wake up. I could have slept for a few minutes or a few hours. All I know is that I'm thirsty. I dredge my way out of bed to go to what I see was the bathroom. After flipping the lights on, I see it's pretty bare bones. Just a standing shower, a sink and a toilet. Oh well, as long as it has running water. I turn on the sink faucet, which takes a couple of seconds to spit out any water. Yes, it has been a while since anyone was here. I cut my hand under the running water for drinking it slowly. I smack my lips a few times. It tastes a bit funny, but it'll do. I'm not really in the mood to leave right now. After a few handfuls of water, I turn the light off and head back to bed. I'm still very tired. I have various dreams recounting the course of my life. Subconsciously I try skipping through them like the ads on video. 
I don't want to remember. When I wake up again, I immediately realise I've been out for a long time. It might even be the middle of the night at this point. Lara never came back, I guess. With a sigh, I sit up and hold my head in one hand. I wish I could stop dreaming. I feel thirsty again, and a bit hungry. Yeah, maybe later. I'm really not in the mood to eat. I decide to just get some more water and go back to sleep for the night. This goes on for the next day or so. I don't even know at this point. All I know is that every time I wake up I feel progressively more tired. Fine by me. Helps me get back to sleep. The water doesn't taste bad anymore. In fact, it doesn't taste like anything. I don't even turn the light on anymore. The dark is nice. Being so far underground has its perks. No way for sunlight to get in. Not sure I'm letting myself feel comfortable down here. I can't escape a thought in the back of my head. The more I fall asleep, the more I hope I don't wake up. I get back into bed, still not covering up. I rest my hands on my chest. My ribs feel even more pronounced. Oh well. I soon fall back asleep. Maybe this will be the last time. We'll see, I guess. It hurts to open my eyes. I'm even starting to feel dizzy, like a bad hangover or something. All I've had is water, so it's not that. I shake my head to try to get rid of it, which only makes me feel even more woozy. I don't have time to figure out as I hear a knock coming from the door. Who could that be, Vita? Cyrus! Cyrus, are you there? Oh, it's just Aaron. With some effort, I get up. My bones start to pop as I shuffle to the door. I have to squint to adjust to the hallway lights. My ears ring. It takes a second where I can understand what Aaron's saying. There you are. Peter said they brought you here. Oh, yeah, just a little while ago. Oh, what's up? A little while ago. Cyrus, what's going on? Nothing. I've just been sleeping. I was pretty tired. Cyrus, it's been over a day since we last saw each other. It's almost five o'clock. Really? We didn't feel that long. Do you mind if I come in? Not really. Help yourself. I move out of the way to let him through. Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, where's your shirt? I sluggishly shrug. My motor functions are definitely suffering. It's, uh, it's more comfortable like this. Why? What's up? Oh, nothing. Just thought you preferred to be covered up. Oh, yeah. I guess that was the point of the turtleneck, huh? Not really. If you want, I can put it back on. Oh, no. Uh, no. I just want to make sure you're comfortable. I casually stretch. Mm, yeah, I'm pretty comfortable. But he's been stuck in a container unit all day. Uh, yeah. He looks worried for some reason. Did you need something? Oh, not in particular. Well, actually, that's not true. I... He sighs with exasperation. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't come sooner. I was embarrassed over how I snapped at you the other day. Did he? I guess he did get a little upset, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Oh, it's nothing to apologise for. I didn't think much of it. Well, still, I want to be sensitive to what you're going through. 
I don't want you to get the impression I'm only thinking about myself. I raise my hands in protest. I've never had that idea of you, Aaron. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. I close my eyes and think back to when you rescued me from Rasum. I was barely lucid as he carried me on his back. I'm pretty sure he protected me the best he could. That is, until... Oh, wait. I suddenly reach the back of my head and start to prod around. There are a few lumps here and there that shouldn't be. Hmm. Oh, what's wrong? Oh, just... I think you need to ask Vita for some help later. I see. Well, I brought you something that should make your life easier. Oh, well, what's that? Aaron finally gets his usual smile back as he takes out his axiom. He flips the inventory screen and produces something shiny and cylindrical. I present your very own axiom. It's called the Computer Alpha Integrated Version 0 0.1. Called Kai for short. He presents it to me with a little bit of flair. I completely forgot about that. It almost makes me feel excited. It's a lot bigger than the other models I've seen. Are you sure you want to give this to me? I'm not really sure I really deserve it. Oh, nonsense. Like I said before, I think it was meant for you. Really, it's no big deal. If you say so. Well, thank you, Aaron. I'm not trying to break you or anything. Well, I'd like to see you try. It's really something else, like someone I know. I'm not sure to really use it, but I'm sure you're smart enough to figure it out. Something's off with his speech. I think he's trying to come off as overtly jovial. It's like he's trying to cheer me up. He really shouldn't be worrying about me this much. I should try to play along, at the very least. I didn't live this long to let my brains turn to mush. How hard can it be? Aaron looks a bit confused. Uh, that's a spirit. He shakes it off, pointing at my arm. Here, hold out your arm and I'll attach it to you. I hold out my left arm. Oh, wait, are you left-handed? Not really. I think I'm ambidextrous. I've probably forgotten how to use my other hand like that. Uh, why? Oh, duh. We well, want to attach this to your dominant hand. Really? That sounds counterintuitive. Wouldn't it be awkward to type with? Well, a bit, but this model is specifically meant for your dominant hand. I'm sure you'll adapt to it in no time. Aaron holds out his wrist with his axiom. These models are useful, but they're not suited for everything. He shifts attention back to the one he's holding. We got this because we had a mission at the manufacturer's laboratory. They were grateful if they outfitted us with axioms, along with a few extra goodies. Sounds like you all do amazing work. Hope I won't be in the way. Aaron coughs. <coughs> uh, you won't be. Uh, we'll make sure you're safe and sound no matter what. Just don't let me distract you, alright? Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway. He holds out the device for me to look at. Besides being silver, there's not much else to comment on. I recommend you look away when we put it on. It's not very pleasant. I cock my head at him. Aaron, I'm sure I can handle it. I slowly turn to show him my ports, indicating I've been through some shit already. Uh, fair enough. Don't say I didn't warn you. I casually hold up my right arm. How much more trouble can my hubris get me into? Maybe it's just curiosity. I want to see how this plays out. Aaron slides one finger down the bottom of the device, causing it to open. Aaron completely calms himself. Ready? Yeah, go for it. Aaron takes a breath for sliding the machine over my wrist. Almost instantly he clamps down on me. It isn't long till I feel a sensation I haven't felt in a long time. Metal digging underneath skin. I'm surprised there's no blood. This technology is pretty amazing, although I could do without the sounds of machinery tearing through my skin. Aaron doesn't seem to hold the process in esteem like I do. The metal feels warm as it starts to wrap around my muscles. 
the Axiom starts to glow a virgin shade of green for altering its shape and size. It reaches from my wrist to the middle of my forearm. Reminds me of an arm brace, a really expensive one. Soon afterward, two slits start to etch themselves on the top side in the form of a cross. The glowing recedes as the Axiom settles down. It's not as warm as it was. It's rather cool to the touch. I can move my wrist without feeling restricted. It fits perfectly. Huh. See, that wasn't so bad. I told you I'd be fine. Aaron just looks at me with a sombre expression. What? Did something go wrong? Osiris. There's uh, something I'd like to do. It might be a little weird, so I'd understand if you said no. Oh, uh, what is it? Aaron's tail flicks behind him. Do you mind if I give you a hug? Huh, is that all? No, I don't mind at all. What brought this on? I'm cut off as I'm almost completely enveloped by him. He's holding me close and tight. My shortness of breath clues me in that he's not holding back. Cyrus, I know you've been through a lot. More than anyone ever, I'm pretty sure. The fact that you're still here is a testament to how strong you are, but... I can feel him shudder and he starts to stroke my back. I don't interrupt him. I know... I know that you can't feel pain. That they made sure they could be as efficient as possible with you to produce the results they wanted. Even so... It's okay if you're hurting, Cyrus. You have people who want to help you now. I know we haven't known each other for long, but I can just see it in your eyes. Aaron starts to stroke the back of my head and chuckles a bit, albeit with some hiccups. You're not as good as an actor as you might think you are. It's clear to anyone how hard this is for you. I don't want you thinking that you should just bottle all of this up. I want to help you through this however I can. I can feel a bit of rumbling in his chest. It reminds me of... someone I loved who is no longer here. It feels... really warm. Instinctually, I raise my arms around him, embracing him in turn. Damn this tiger. It's been centuries since I've shed a tear. Let alone this many. I don't know how long we stay like this. My sense of time has been screwed up for a while. Aaron eventually pats my back and slowly lets go. I tried to make it obvious that I was suffocating, but I didn't want to let go. Sorry, I know that was sudden. It's okay, Aaron. I think I needed that. I used my thumb to wipe my right eye clean. I uh, really appreciate everything you've done for me. I probably seem distant and all, but... Cyrus, you've been through something traumatic. A lot of things, in fact. I'm not going to hold it against you if you're feeling mixed up about everything. However, he starts to rub the top of my head. I will get mad at you if you keep it to yourself. Let us help you, all right? Aaron looks at me with those gentle eyes of his. I think back to the nurses that were soon and how many of them didn't even look at me. Not directly, anyway. Y yeah, I might need some help getting help. If that makes sense? Of course it does, Cyrus. We'll be with you every step of the way, I promise. Can't even begin to remember the last time I felt this... hole. Thank you, Aaron. I really, really mean it. I can't deny I'm a broken mess for a person. But the fact there's someone out there who wants to try to help me is all I need. I can tell you, you mean it. Like I said, you're not the best actor. I'm just out of practice. Right. He gives my head two more pats for retracting his paw. Speaking of, what's going on? You've looked a bit out of it since I walked in. 
as if on cue my exposed stomach starts to growl. I rub the back of my head with a bit of shame. Uh, well, I guess I am a bit hungry. When was the last time you ate? He has a serious look on his face. It makes me feel even more ashamed. Uh, well, we last had dinner together? What? I nearly stumbled backwards as an exclamation, but managed to catch myself. Cyrus, that was almost three days ago. Ah, was it? Aaron huffs as he pulls up his axiom about to type something. Okay, I'll get at you later. We've got to get you something to eat. I'll run home and grab you something. He mumbles under his breath. Should have waited for giving you the axiom. He hesitates for a moment and then sighs. Should really give you a punishment for making me worry. But I think you'll need something nice after everything. Have you remembered any of your favourite foods? It's been so long. What were they? Oh, I know. Uh, you heard of carbonara? My mum used to make it for special occasions, with lots of bacon in it. Mum used to make it the best. Hmm, I've never heard of it. I'll do some research and see what I can do. Oh, yeah, here's my ID. Aaron fishes out a slip of paper from his pocket and hastily gives it to me. I'll some help your axiom before I go. I hold up my right arm to get a good look at it. I can see my expression in the reflection. Maybe later. I think I need to take a minute for myself while worrying about it. By all means, I'll be back in an hour or so. Rest up, Cyrus. I will. Thank you, Aaron. Very good. I'll see you soon. I go to plop my butt on my bed. Sounds like a plan. I'll let you know if anything comes up. You better. Aaron's tail swishes happily as he makes his way out of my room, but not before waving at me. He have a small smile and wave back. Once the door is closed, I look down at the pillow to my left and immediately flop into it. I'm still tired. I'm looking forward to waking up this time. Come on, Cyrus. Don't leave me hanging. Play it for me. Damien and I are sitting on his bed back home. He's bouncing excitedly next to me, causing the bed to creak as it moves. Hey, calm down. You know I'm pretty shy about performing. It's been a while since I played the guitar in front of anyone, let alone sing. You should have thought of that before hyping me up so much. All I did was say I wrote something for you. And? No one's ever done that for me before. Of course I'm excited. He's radiating optimism. He's always been pretty supportive of my creative ventures. I figure since his birthday's around the corner I'd try to write him something. Well, just know that it's not finished yet. I'll show you what I've got. It's just the lyrics and some chords. Well, that's way more than I could ever hope to manage. Last time you tried to explain your process, my head started spinning. <laughs> it took me a while to figure out. Main bigs I learned between schoolwork. Well, I'm glad you did. We wouldn't have met otherwise. I push my glasses to hide the fact I'm blushing. He's right. I had a free afternoon near the end of my undergraduate career. I brought my, my guitar to play in a secluded part of campus. It's a small garden by the track and field that no one really knows about. Damien was out on his run for the afternoon and caught me playing. Then we started talking and, well, I can't help but smile. All right, you ready? Damien stops his bouncing and gives me his full attention. Yeah, absolutely. I take a deep breath for tuning my guitar. I give it a few strums and then clear my throat. I've been wondering what happens at the end of time Was it all for nothing? Was there any point? I haven't been able to resist the temptation of finding out Yet there's you 
Even when it fades, you believe in us after eternity. I hope I'll see you until it all turns to nothing. Even if we're like shooting stars across the empty sky. An annoying beeping starts. Is it my alarm? Wait. No, I don't have an alarm clock yet. Groggly, I sit up. My axiom is making some kind of noise. How the hell do I turn it off? I start waving my hand over it a few times. Eventually a screen pops up. It's a lot less staticky than the other ones I've seen. It's completely transparent. A greetings, operator. Synchronization is complete. Current synchronization rate 67%. What are your orders? Uh, it's like I can hear it in my head. Uh, nothing. Stand by, I guess. Affirmative. And just like that, the screen fades back inside. What a weird way to wake up. I lie back down and stare at the ceiling. It's been a while since I had such clear dreams of the past. I wonder if moving on for the second time will be harder than the first. Maybe we should start a dream journal. Could be a good way to process everything. Hold my arm up, looking at my axiom. I'm sure there's something on this thing that resembles a notepad. I zero in on my expression once more. My bangs are getting long again. I'll need to find someone to help me cut them. Hard to believe my hair was ever brown. Now that I'm awake, I might as well figure out my axiom some more. I sit up and look it over. Despite being embedded in my skin, it's not uncomfortable. I have full mobility for the most part. It feels a little tight if I flex my wrist, but that's about it. I swipe my hand over it to try and activate it, assuming it turns on like others I've seen. Thankfully, the lines etched into the metal start to light up almost instantly. I'm greeted with a much different screen than any I've seen on other axioms. It's much clearer, almost like glass. A clear-cut border surrounds the whole thing. Everything seems to be in colour, despite being translucent. Ah, the opacity settings to your liking. I hear that strange robotic voice in my head again. Uh, sure. Sense in doubt. Recalibrating. The screen becomes much less translucent. It's almost like a floating tablet screen. Are the opacity settings now to your liking? I'm starting to get a headache from all of this. Aaron didn't mention an AI. How are you talking inside my head? Apologies, operator. After running diagnostics, you are found to not be my former user. Would you like a walk through of my capabilities? Who is your former user? I'm sorry, operator, but that is classified information. What the? Maybe later. I just want to look through it myself. Is there internet? Unfamiliar with the term. Please elaborate. Oh yeah, I guess the internet is no longer a thing. What do they use now? Sense an operator intent. Would you like to open the gate? The what? Oh, that's what they call it. Duh. About a decade ago, some scientists would talk about how nice it was to have something like the internet again. I guess this thing can read my thoughts. That's kind of weird. Would you like to turn off mental link? I answer without hesitating. Yes, please. Understood. Bzz. Now the voice is coming from the device itself. If you'd like to turn Mental Link back on, simply head to the settings. Much better. My stomach starts to growl again. I should have checked the time before falling asleep. How long has it been? I tried to find a clock on this thing. It's a few minutes to 5pm. Okay, good. I didn't sleep too long this time. 
I get a piece of paper with Aaron's ID. I'm not sure if it's because of the lack of food in my stomach, but it's really hard to read this. His handwriting is atrocious. Uh, Kai. Yes, operator. How do I input someone's ID? One moment. Without me lifting a finger, a screen pops up with a keypad. Okay, this thing is pretty neat. It takes me a few tries to input the ID code correctly. Enter your name pops up. Aaron Cosmos. It's a bit finicky to type with my left hand, but I eventually manages to send a message to him. I think I got this to work. Let me know, I guess. I slide the screen away, entering the main interface. Reminds me of tablets from back in the day. Soon a notification pops up. I click the button, revealing a message from Aaron. It looks like it. I was just about to head over. I think I figured out how to make that dish you asked about. I'll see you in the break room soon, okay? I wait a minute before responding. I was thinking just have red receipts, but I remember my M etiquette. Sure, I'll be there in a sec. After I send the message, I try sliding the screen away. It takes a few tries. But I can't deny how cool it is. I get it from the bed. I'm still a bit woozy, but I persevere. I make it the bathroom, flicking on the lights. My eyes strain to adjust. I smile sadly at myself in the mirror. Man, I look like crap. I wash my face before heading out, grabbing my turtleneck and sliding on for the first time in days. Yeah, definitely feels a bit more loose. Oops. This fits a little oddly over the axiom. I'm not sure I'll use it. I'll ask Aaron to bring me some of the clothes he ordered. Maybe I'll wear a t-shirt? I could try to rock a tank top like Damien used to wear. I turn off the light before leaving my room. Thankfully my room isn't too far from the break room. It takes me a little longer than I'd like to just to walk over. I can smell something good from around the corner, making my mouth water. Pick up my old man's pace and make my way inside. Aaron has already played in what looks like a good recreation of Carbonara. Yeah, dinner's almost ready. How are you feeling? I don't have it, I must say I'm fine, but... Honestly, I could be better. Looking forward to eating something. I give him a sheepish smile and he responds with a warm smile of his own. I got there, I brought plenty. You have as much as you want. Thank you, I appreciate it. Aaron pulls up a chair for me. Of course. Here, I'll get you some water. I nod as I look over the plate in front of me. The spices smell a bit different, but it smells good. Guess I don't even know how Mom made it. Can't even tell if I'm shaken from excitement from a lack of eating anything. Probably the latter. My hand is trembling slightly as I try to scoop up some pasta with my fork. It's really, really good. Oh, is it? It's my first time, so go easy on me. It's amazing, Aaron. That's all I can say for taking another forkful. Definitely getting some bacon in there. I guess that's still around. Thank God. I'm happy to hear that. So, tell me. What's been going on? He casually pulls up a chair across from me as he starts eating his own meal. Well, I've been having these dreams lately. That's the end of Arc 2, so that seems like an excellent place to finish for now. Of course, we will be back with the interlude in the next uh, episode, which will be sometime. Um, not as long as last time, it won't be uh, such a wait. I do love that uh, picture of Damien and Cyrus on the phone at the end there. Very nice. I should do some pasta carbonara myself right now after reading that. Oh, I'll go into the kitchen later and deal with that. 
But yeah, that always remember the flowers. So it won't be so long before uh, we return to it. I'm not quite sure what's going to be up next week. I'm still working on the schedule. We're going to try and get caught up on a few of the ends, as I said before. Just so I can actually say, okay, I'm here with this one. Wait for the next update rather than just trying to get things out and uh, taking forever. I think we're up to like chapter 17 on Patreon for Remember the Flowers right now. I've just done chapter 9, so this is going to be quite a long way to go, so I'm not going to rush through here. We'll see how things go, and of course there is more smoke room coming, so we can get caught up with Nick's from there. But before I go, as always, thank you to all my donors on Kofi and Patreon. And my top patrons are Andy Peng, Samuto, Omar, Lover Starburn, Harvest Mouse Productions, Vieka, Rafu, Mario Cervantes, Matt Kenya, Kartek, Kobus Visser, Bastian, Brian Hall, Tiger Cup, Ida Corval, Dissonance, Grizz, Spiderling, Kopi, Sindri Dragowolf, Evan King, Exec, Aaron Fox, and Mohammed Al Zamel. Special thanks to all of them, and there are a couple of uh, creators in there as well, so can always check out other VNs and go and support them because they take the time to uh, support me which is very nice of them I really appreciate those people who do that and speaking of uh, VNs don't forget at uh, some point uh, we will be returning to password for the true ending I know there's work going on in that and once the final version is done we'll be dropping back into Hammond Manor or maybe the environs and uh, running through that and if you haven't watched my password videos already you should it's a very good vm okay with that add done and since i don't know what's up uh, next week thanks for watching bye for now <laughs>